Hi, and welcome to our motorcycle jacket and pant guide. In this section, we are looking at armor plating. So with motorcycle armor, there are three questions you have to ask yourself anytime you're looking at it. They are, where is it located on your body? What is it made of? And who has certified it? The first two questions, where it's located and what it's made of, we're going to talk about right here. That third question about who certified it is going to be in our next guide section on safety ratings. So right off the bat, where it's located in a jacket, you're going to look for padding on the shoulders, on the elbows, on the chest, on the back, down the spine, and sometimes here on the ribs on the side as well. In a pant, you're going to look for it on the seat, on the hips, you're going to look for it on the thighs, and you're going to look for it uh, down on the knee sometimes as well there. You don't have to cover all these areas, obviously. Where you want to make concessions with regards to your safety is up to you. The one thing we would urge you, though, is if the last time you tried an armored uh, jacket or an armored pant was like 10 years ago, you maybe we're trying it again because nowadays uh, armor padding is way, way more comfortable than it used to be. So don't write it off just because it's uncomfortable because it is pretty good. It might be worth a try for you. All right, so that second question, what it is made of, that's what we're going to look at here. First off, we have silicon. So silicon is a gel. Uh, with that, it has pretty good uh, impact absorption. It has pretty good dissipation as well. It can spread it over a large, large area, but the abrasion resistance in that is not going to be exceptional. The other problem with silicon is it's generally quite heavy. So manufacturers are going to use it quite sparingly. You often find it sewn right into the material itself. They're going to use it in areas that aren't really critical. You know, you get hard padding around, you know, your spine, your elbows, that kind of thing. They'll sew in some silicon just for the comfort factor. It's really comfortable against your skin. It does provide a little bit of protection as well. After that, we can look at something like thermoplastic. So we have some right up here. Thermoplastic is exactly what it sounds like. It's a hot plastic injected into a mold, cooled down, gets really, really hard. It gives you a hard plate. So for protection, that's excellent. I mean, impact absorption is good, especially in these geometric designs. Uh, the abrasion resistance, the dissipation, all that's really, really great. Um, the problem with plastic mainly is going to be comfort. So since it's so hard, sitting against the skin feels a little bit awkward. For that reason, manufacturers are often going to line it with a foam or even a silicon or something else like that, uh, which is going to make it more comfortable against your skin. The other thing to note with uh, thermoplastic panels is that they tend to migrate a little bit. They're made and cast specifically to form to a part of your body. Um, and since they're so hard, if they even just get disjointed a little bit, they can't mold to your body, so they're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable there. So please look for something with adjustable padding if you are going to put plastic in it. That's going to let you move it around a little bit and get that comfortable fit. After that, we can look at something like foam, like this back protector I have here. Foam on me obviously is very lightweight. It's bendable. It's going to be comfortable against your body. It's quite an inexpensive option as well. In terms of safety, the impact absorption is going to be pretty good. Impact dissipation, maybe not as good as it could be. And abrasion resistance, not exceptional as well. So foam is going to be a little bit lower on that safety spectrum. The other thing to note with foam is that it does degrade over time. So if you have a five-year-old jacket with some foam padding in it, it may not be as safe as when it was new. The main reason for that is because you're bending. You know, you're bending your back, you're bending your arms. And if you bend foam in the same way over a long period of time, it's going to degrade with that. It's going to tend to like dense up and not become as safe in those areas where it's bending. What I will say, however, though, is high density foams tend to be better with this. Memory foam is really high density. And it's quite good. It'll last quite a bit longer. Same with Eva foam, ethylene vinyl acetate. That's going to be a little bit better. It's not going to degrade as well. The abrasion resistance is actually really good on it. So some foams actually are going to be quite good protection for you. After that, we have the top dog. This is the king of padding. This is a viscoelastic material. Viscoelastic material is a really, really neat material. When it's moving slow against your body, like when you're just riding, it's quite flexible. It's going to move with you. It's going to feel comfortable on you. But if you get in an accident and it tries to move fast, it's going to stiffen up all of a sudden and act like a hard material. So you're going to get all the safety benefits of that. If you think back to the cornstarch and water experiment that you did in grade three, it's basically the same principle that's going on here. The cost, of course, of having the best of both worlds is, well, the cost. I mean, these are going to be quite expensive pads, but like I said, you're getting a great comfort, great safety protection level uh, with a pad like this. Oftentimes, companies aren't going to come out and say, you know, this is a viscoelastic pad. Instead, they're going to call it whatever their in-house material is. So this is Climb. They're going to call it D3O um, with these kind of pads. But you also see it under different brands. Sometimes it's called SAS Tech. Uh, Ruka calls it APS Air. Um, and Aerostitch calls it TF Armor. So there's all kinds of different names for it. You're going to have to do a bit of research to figure out what actually is viscoelastic. So that's it for the common armor plating materials. Please remember that the best option for you is probably going to be a mix of some of those things. It's going to be, uh, you know, maybe a firmer material on the spine, maybe a softer material on the elbows, you know. So what we really recommend with that is to get something with uh, removal padding. You know, if you have a jacket with those zipper pockets where you can take the plates out, then you can replace them at, later, at a later date and really put in what works for you. That's it for this section, but we have loads more coming up, so please stick around. For this part, though, thank you very much for watching.